Hi, welcome to Tone House. This YouTube channel will be dedicated entirely to getting the most out of the equipment that you already have. And if you're buying something new, most of the time the equipment that we're buying is very similar to the equipment that we already have. So how do we get around that stigma? But to kick it all off, today we're going to be talking about the Line 6 Pod Go and how to get a full working rig on the Line 6 Pod Go and make it sound just right. Before we take a dive into the Line 6 Pod Go, what I do want to mention very, very quickly and briefly is that tone is subjective, meaning the kind of sound that you like, other people might not like, and vice versa. The, the kind of sound that other people might like, you might not like. So even though we're teaching everybody these basic concepts, you can adjust these to however you'd like. Today I'm starting off with a Fender Stratocaster, and the reason I'm using a Stratocaster is because this is probably the most owned guitar in the world. Either people have a variation of the Fender Strat or they have a Fender Strat. Squire, Fender, American, Mexican, doesn't matter. This is probably one of the most bought guitars in the whole world. Now, while using the Line 6 Pod Go, we have to keep in mind that we have 10 slots and six of them are already being used up, meaning we can't change them. The six slots that are already being taken up are volume, wah, amplifier, cabinet, EQ, and an effects loop. Though we will be using five of them, we will not be using the effects loop. The first thing that I'm gonna do on the Line 6 Pod Go is find an amp and a cab. Most of the time I like to gravitate towards the Vox style amplifiers, but go ahead and experiment with any kind of amplifier you'd like. I've had this unit for a while. I've tried every single amplifier and every time a new update comes out that includes new amplifiers, I rush to download it and try them all out. The one that seems to work best for me is Old Faithful, the Vox AC30 style amplifier on the Line 6 unit, specifically for the Podgo, and the matching cabs with the blue speakers. I highly recommend that you sweep through the microphones and find which one works best for you. After having messed around with it, now it's time to set your settings on the amplifier. Keep in mind that we have a volume control, a gain control, and a master volume control on most amplifiers. Though it can affect your tone, the one that will have the greatest effect on your tone is the gain control. Just like a traditional tube amplifier, the more you put up your gain, aka your volume, the more saturation you're gonna get from the amplifier, meaning the more distortion. I tend to like my amplifier a little on the distorted side, and that's my clean tone. Once I have my amplifier set to a sound I like, I'm going to start creating my first gain stage. Now keep in mind that we have six foot switches on the Line 6 Pod Go that we can use to our advantage. I mainly like to use the Line 6 Pod Go and the pedal board format instead of the snapshots or the presets. The reason I like to have it in the pedal format is because I like to add parameter changes to a lot of the buttons. I only really use one or two buttons to turn off and on effects. The other buttons are just moving parameters a lot. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with my first gain stage. I'm not going to use a pedal. I'm just gonna move the gain to the amplifier and set it to one of the foot switches. So the first gain stage is just gonna be a little more of a pushed style amplifier, meaning I'm getting a little more gain from the amplifier and I might have to adjust the EQ a little bit. Once I'm happy with what I have, I'm going to set all of this on the first foot switch, which should be the one with the arrow pointing down. After that, I'm going to choose my first pedal, which will be a distortion pedal. Before we talk about distortion, we should talk about signal chain. It's very important that you decide what pedal goes in what order, because one plus one does not equal two in pedals. You should think of every pedal like a filter. You are filtering the pedal before into the pedal that comes after. 
meaning if you have two different gain stages and then you flip them around, they are going to react differently every single time. You can totally experiment this on your own and I encourage you to do it. Just as a general blueprint, what I like to do is first wah, then compressors or EQ, after that overdrives and distortions, then volume pedal, amplifier, cab, delay, and reverb. If we use any modulation, you can kind of play around with it on the chain. Sometimes people like to put chorus effects before distortions. Other times they like to put it after the distortions. I always recommend you put it before the volume pedal and then just kind of figure out what you like. So now that we got that out of the way, let's use our first distortion. I typically like to go for the Tima pedal, which is just a Timmy pedal, or at least Line 6's version of a Timmy pedal, because it's very, for lack of a better term, transparent and helps push the frequencies that you already have. Now the point of this overdrive is to give me a little bit of a thicker, kind of bigger overdriven sound that sounds good with rhythm and gives me a little bit of the chugga chugga kind of sound. Once I'm happy with what I've set, then I'm gonna put that on the second foot switch. Now, just with those two foot switches, I already have three gain stages. The first foot switch is gonna give me a little bit more of the transparent pushed amplifier sound. The second foot switch is gonna give me the more rhythmic, thicker distortion sound. And both of them together are going to give me that solo sound. <laughs> Once I finish with that, I'm going to move on over to my delay and reverb. The first thing I'm going to do is set my delay. Now, I'm going to choose one delay that's going to help me kind of push the limitations of the time of the delay. Usually it's a digital delay, but you can go ahead and choose whatever you want. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use the tap tempo function. And on the tap tempo function, I'm going to leave it as a chord note. I know for church guitarists, uh, it's really popular to use the dotted eighth note, but the reason I'm leaving it as a chord note is because I can manipulate the chord note to sound like any other kind of rhythmic pattern that I need. For example, I can tap the chord note, the eighth note, the dotted eighth note, the triplet, even a 16th note if I need it. Meaning, if this is my chord note, I can tap the eighth note, the dotted eighth note. I'm not even going to attempt the triplet because it's really hard to snap, but you get the point. Now I'm going to add this to one of the other foot switches. Now, one of the foot switches is going to just turn on and off the delay, and the other foot switch is going to move the parameters of the delay. Now, we've already done this before with the amplifier, so we're just using the same thing that we've learned already. All I'm doing though with the delay is moving the mix and the feedback. Once I'm happy with what I have, then I'll move on to the reverb. I know myself, the reverb for me is always on. So I like to use 
just one foot switch to move the parameters of the reverb, but always leave the reverb on and not adjust it. Now I know myself, I'm always gonna leave reverb on. So all I'm gonna do is choose one of the foot switches to move the parameters of the reverb instead of turning it off and on. Usually I like the plate reverbs because they give you a brighter sound, there's not so much low end, and that's basically the ambient sound anyway. First, I'm going to adjust the short reverb. It's going to sound a little bit like a hall. The main point of the short reverb is it's not noticeable unless I turn it off. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to adjust parameters again and give myself a long ambient reverb. Now that I'm done with all the core effects, all I have left is one foot switch for my fun effect. This could be anything. This could be an octave effect, chorus effect, tremolo, any kind of effect that you like. And this is where you can experiment a little bit more on the placement of your fun effect. Now, just to keep it simple, I'm going to use a tremolo because I love the tremolo effect. The trem that I'm gonna use is a basic boss style green tremolo, but I'm going to use a tab tempo function on the tremolo effect also. I always set my trem to do 16 notes just because I like how it reacts. And since I'm using the temp tempo function, I can also manipulate that and make it slow or fast. Well guys, that's how you get a full functioning rig with the Line 6 Pod Go. The reason I chose this is because this is the cheapest Line 6 product or Line 6 multi-effects unit that you can buy at the moment. But I think with the limitations that the Line 6 Pod Go has, we can actually get very creative and get amazing results. <laughs>
That being said, don't let limitations wear you down. Work around it. Find new and creative ways to use the equipment that you already have. Thank you so much for tuning into this video, and we'll see you next time.